Hi, my name is Gregory Hodgson. I'm here at the 2017 Canadian Science Policy Conference. I'm with Dr. Stephanie McQuarrie of Cape Breton University. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. No problem. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about your research? Absolutely. So my research at Cape Breton University is primarily driven by undergraduate students, which makes it quite unique. Um, there's several undergraduate institutions across Canada. Cape Breton is quite good at implementing undergraduates in areas of research that you know is typical of graduate student research. Um, so our research is focused on, in two areas. One is on the development of heterogeneous catalysts mm -hmm. um, on pure porous materials like porous silicas and another is in the area of biomass and biochar. And so sort of combining the two fields, the biochar project has been driven largely by industry over the past five years, especially when there was um, a increase in oil prices, there was a sort of a drive across Canada to look for alternative energy sources and biochar sort of became an option. The oil mm -hmm. prices quickly dropped and biochar no longer had a use, but there is a bioeconomy drive across Canada as well. So there still will be biochar. We're looking at implementing biochar as a possible um, source uh, for de designing these heterogeneous catalysts using cheap green alternative methods. So in terms of green technology, what do you think is Canada's greatest challenge as far as advancing science and innovation towards an energy efficient economy? Yeah, so I mean, it's very difficult um, because it's easy from a researcher perspective at a university to say we're doing green technology and you know we're using uh, solvent free reactions and green catalysts that are designed on green supports. But um, from an economy perspective, those routes are not necessarily viable or economically feasible in large-scale industrial practices. I mean, industry needs to be able to make money. That's the whole point. So, yes, it might be nice to move towards more greener methods, but they have to be economically viable, and I think mm -hmm. that's the biggest challenge. And how much of a role do uh, different partnerships like academia, industry, government partnerships uh, have in that? Like, uh, how, how important do you think it would be to try and make um, partnerships with government more than just a source of funding? So industry, government, yeah. uh, academia, government partnerships? I think that's that? critical. So the government has over the past, I'd say 10 years, definitely moved towards uh, funding more opportunities for collaboration between fundamental researchers and industrial partners. And those collaborations uh, have become stronger and you see them more often. So you go to a university where there's researchers uh, doing you know fundamental science they usually have now some sort of industrial connection or industrial collaboration which is which is new and unique over the last 10 years so the government's done a good job of that in terms of providing funding um, to connect industry and researchers but now it's time to bring these kinds of connections more forefront within the government and within Canada's economy so building on them making it more plausible to see long-term relationships exist and be fruitful and have of real products come from these fundamental connections between researchers and industry. Great, so I understand that you have a panel here at the CSPC on soapbox science. Yes. And that's yeah. um, an outreach program. Uh, mm -hmm. What can you tell us about it? So um, we're discussing soapbox science in terms of the, the pilot project that happened this past year at, driven through Ryerson U University. And um, I was one of the soapbox scientists that performed mm -hmm. in uh, downtown Toronto in the spring. And um, the idea behind Soapbox Science is to bring role models, and specifically in our case women, who are scientists in Canada, to the community in a way that is fun and entertaining mm -hmm. and, and really shows um, the community and just random people walking down the street what research is going on in Canada, but also highlights the fact that uh, it's women that are doing this research. So there's a lot of, I, I actually have a program at Cape Breton University um, called Island Wise, which is a uh, initiative to promote women in science and engineering, and especially um, younger women. And this particular program goes across the island because Cape Breton is quite rural. So there's a, a connection with um, trying to promote young women in rural areas to science. Um, and it's, it's one thing to sit in front of an audience and say, you know, women are driving science and there's lots of women doing science in Canada um, and to really have those discussions and that's important. But it's a whole other thing to just put women in front, women scientists in front of the public and 
and have them talk about their research in, in a way that is relatable to the public. And that is really impactful and quite, um, quite a unique program. So there was only two soapbox science uh, initiatives in Canada ever, and they were both in um, Toronto this past year. Um, it's, it's a very clever way to, to sort of promote women in science because uh, young girls would be walking down the road and see this, this you know, scientist dressed up, or not dressed up, but has her lab coat on and her goggles on and, and she's standing on a soapbox talking about, well, for me it was biochar, and mm -hmm. has models and is relating it to the public and then it's more attainable because a lot of young women or a lot of young girls in our communities, they see scientists as doctors and dentists mm -hmm. and vets and that's all they attribute science to. And so it's nice to have this other, other way of interacting with the public. That's a really great initiative. initiative. Yeah. I, uh, I really think we do need to have more women in science, technology, engineering, and math, and this is probably a, a good way to go about yep. um, doing it. As far as that goes, uh, what do you think is the greatest value of the Canadian Science Policy Conference for you? Yeah, um, I think that from what I've seen so far and sort of read about, I think the, the most value for this conference is putting a group of people together that don't typically interact. So the government, mm -hmm. industry, different sectors, policymakers, people that are responsible for large businesses and small businesses, and then fundamental researchers and educators, all in the same conference to discuss these different issues and really get a, a much more broader perspective of what uh, is needed to move Canada forward. That's really great. Uh, so before we go, could I could you just tell our audience uh, where they might be able to go online to learn more about your research? Yeah, absolutely. So if you want to hear about my research program at Cape Breton University and all the hard work my undergraduate students are doing in the area of organic catalysis, you can check uh, my website out through the cbu.ca website. And you can also take a look at our Island Wise program through the cbu.ca website and check out the initiatives that we're pushing forward in Cape Breton um, in terms of promoting young women in science and engineering and technology. All right. Thank you very much Thanks for your time. Me. It was really a pleasure to meet yeah, you. Yeah, it was great. Thanks very much.